Hello and welcome to the sixth video of this series where I'm teaching you how to work with NetCDF files in Python. So back in video five, I explained why it's often better to divide your data into smaller files and outlined some best practices for how the data should be divided. In this video now, I'll show you how to create multiple NetCDF files quickly and easily in one Python script. So let's start with this basic Python code here for creating a single NetCDF file. And if you don't know how to create one file, go back and watch the fourth video in this series where I show you how to do that. I'll put a link down in the description. But I'll go through this quickly. Um, I am importing some modules at the top. I'm loading in some data from a CSV file that we can see here in the data and CSV files subdirectory. I'm creating an X-ray object where I assign the pressure column within the data frame as a coordinate variable called pressure. And I'm creating data variables, temperature and salinity from the temperature and salinity uh, columns in the data frame. I'm then assigning some variable attributes that's metadata that describe each of the variables. And these attributes are taken from the climate and forecast conventions. And then I'm assigning also some global attributes, where these attributes are taken from the attribute convention for data discovery, the ACDD conventions, and also the climate and forecast conventions. And on this page of the Arctic Data Center, there are some requirements and recommendations for which global attributes you can include. Finally, at the bottom, we're writing the data to an SEDF file, and I'm just printing it here so we can see it in our terminal. And if I open this up, you can see the NetCDF file with the dimensions, coordinates, data variables, and the attributes. So now in this tutorial, I'm going to be assuming that you have a lot of different similar files. So I have the one file that I worked with here for a single dev profile, but then I have different files for each uh, station that was visited. And they're all formatted in exactly the same way, and the column headers, crucially, are consistent. And if I just expand this a little bit, you can also see that the name for each of the files is consistent. The only thing that's different between the different uh, files is the station that's been visited. So what we want to do in our Python script is loop through each of these CSV files in turn and create a separate NetCDF file from each one. So to do that, we're going to use a for loop. I'll give you a very quick example of how this works. Let's say we have a list like this, uh, one, two, three, four, five. And what a for loop does is allow you to iterate through this list. And for each iteration, you access a different element within the list. So if I have for number, in numbers, and then I print number, and I will expand my terminal a little bit and run this. You can see that for each iteration of a for loop, a different number has been printed. But what we want to do is iterate through each CSV file in turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a module called blob. And we're going to import pandas as pd, which will help us open up each of the uh, CSV files. I'm going to create a variable called folder path, which is going to be the relative path to my CSV files. So that's data CSV files. And then we need to get the files within that folder. So we can go files equals glob dot glob. We take folder path, and then we can take only the files that have a CSV suffix. And if I print this, files, you can see we have a list of all the file paths to each of the CSV files. Building on our for loop, we can do for file in files, df for data frame equals pd.read. CSV file. And if we print the data frame, 
if we run this again, we can see that for each iteration, a different uh, data frame has been created. Now, if we want to create a netcdf file from this, we can use the same code that we've used before. So if I go into here, I'm going to copy and paste this. We also need to use X-Array. If I paste it in here, we need to be careful that the indentation is correct. And I've also used date time, so I can use from date time import date time. We can remove this line because we're creating our data frame up here. And we don't need to print this. So what this will do is loop through each of our CSV files, create an X-Array object within each loop. And that X-Array object will include our coordinate and data variables. We're then writing our variable attributes to the X-Array object and our global attributes. And then we're writing it here. Now, I want to print this as well to see how this looks in our terminal. And if I run this and expand the terminal again, we can see that for each loop, a different file has been created. If we look at the pressure coordinate, we can see that the values are different to the pressure coordinate here. So that's great, but we actually only have a single netcdf file here that we're creating within the first iteration of the loop, and then we're overwriting during each loop afterwards. Also, we're likely to want to vary some of our global attributes. Now, some of them will be the same for every single netcdf file, things like your license and feature type, but things like our coordinates, uh, the time coverage, the title of each file, for all of these things, you're likely to want to assign different values for each netcdf file. In other words, you're going to want to assign different values within each iteration of your for loop. So how do we do that? So what I recommend that you do is create a separate file for all the global or variable attributes that you want to vary between the different netcdf files. So I've pre-prepared some here in this metadata files subdirectory. There's different ways that you could do this. I'm going to show you how to do this using a CSV file, where each column is a different field that you want to vary between the different files, and each row corresponds to a separate netcdf file. And the key thing here is that you have some information within each row that can be used to link that row to its respective data file. So in this case, we have a column for the station, S1, S2, X3, etc. And the station name is also in the file name of the data file. So we can link them together. Now, you don't have to use a CSV file. You can also use a, a JSON file, for example, or a YAML file, which is what I personally use when I'm doing it myself. But I'm going to show you how to do it with a CSV file in this tutorial, because CSV files are easier for most people to work with but it really doesn't make that much difference. So let's go back to our Python script here and scroll to the top. Now in this example, I have a single CSV file that includes all the metadata for all the netcdf files that I'll create. And so I'm gonna open that up here before I get to the for loop. So metadata df equals pd dot read csv to open my csv file. And the relative path to this is data metadata files, depth profiles, metadata.csv. Now, if I want to loop through each row of this, I could do something like for index row in metadata df dot iterows. So this is telling it to iterate through each row and create a row object for each iteration. 
then I can access each of the columns within this like this. So uh, row uh, latitude would be now uh, the latitude for that row. So if I print that, if I run this now, you can see that a different latitude has been printed for each loop. But that's not what I'm going to do in this case. Let me uncomment all of this. In this case, I'm going to open up each of my data files up here. And what I want to do is extract the station name from the file name. And then I'm going to use that station name to access the relevant row within my metadata data frame. So actually, let's comment this out again. So if we print this file object, this is just a string. And what we want to do is extract a certain part of that string. So if we do file.split, and then split by underscore, and we have a look at how that looks, you can see we now have a list of each component of that file name. We firstly just want to get the last component of that, this s4.csv, for example. So we can open up some square brackets to access a certain index within that list. And to get the last one, we can use minus one, which is always the last element within your list. Run that again. And now we want to split this further to just get the station name. So we can do again, dot split, split by the dot this time, and run this. Now we have a list with just these two elements. We want the first one. So we can just do in square brackets, zero. And there we go. So instead of printing this, let's write this to a variable called station equals this. Now, how do we get the latitude from this? So that's this column here. Well, we can use metadata df, which is the name of our data frame here. And we can use a function called lock, which helps find an element at a certain location. So we open square brackets. We have to use the name of our data frame again, metadata df, where station, which is the name of our column with the station information, is equal to, that's two equal signs, station. So the row where the station column is equal to this variable that you've created here, then cover and latitude, which is the name of our latitude column. If I print this, so we can see what's happening. You can see it's created a data frame object. That's not what we want. But because this only has a single cell, we can just do dot values, which will give us a list like this. And the first item of this single item list, and there we go. So we're creating a new latitude variable each time we iterate through this for loop. Now it's a bit of copying and pasting to get all the different values we want. So we can do another one for longitude. Timestamp and ID. And if I print all of this and have a look at that in the terminal, there we go. And now it's just a case of inserting these variables into the code below. So I don't need to print this anymore. And I can uncomment this. We're also taking the current time, which we can assign. So each file will have a different time that has been created. All of this is fine. The variable attributes are going to be the same for every single file, most likely. Although depending on what variable attributes you have, you might want to edit some here. But in this case, I'm going to have the variable attributes the same for every single file. Then if we move down to the global attributes, we have here the latitude. Now we actually want to make sure this is a float and not a string. So we can just uh, ensure that. The geospatial lat min and the geospatial lat max are going to be the same because this is just a point on a map, a single depth profile. And the longitude is going to go here. And also here. 
we have a time coverage start, which is going to be different for each of our files. So the variable that we created was called timestamp. That's fine, that will be a string from timestamp here. This is the time that the data were collected. Your title is going to be different for each file. Now, I encourage you to use a better title than I have used in my dummy data here. But I've just added this here, heth, which is then a function string. And this allows me to include a variable within the string. So depth profile data for, and then if you open these uh, curly weird brackets, you can use station, your variable here. Your summary might also want to be different. I'm not going to change that in this case. Your ID at the top. We don't need this within the curly brackets. You can have a look through if anything else needs changing. Probably the station name. And of course, the name of the file. So instead of uh, one file, I'm going to include the station name in the name of my NetCDF file. Let's uncomment this and print each X-ray object in turn for each loop. I've put this station here, but I forgot to call this as a function string with the F before the quotation marks. And if I run this now, if I open this up, we can see we have different uh, objects and the ID is different in each case. We can see one here and one here. And what we can see here on the left now is that a different file has been created for each iteration of the loop. So thanks for watching. If you found this useful, like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below. In the next video, I'll show you how you can quickly combine data from different NetCDF files in a single Python script. See you next time.